Hi friends. I don't know about you, but we sure got a lot of snow this week. In fact, there's still a lot on the ground. My husband, Pastor Mitch, worked very hard to clear the sidewalks and our driveway of the snow. It made me think, what kind of gear do you think would be necessary to do that task? Let's think about that for a few minutes. What if I put on this gear, t-shirt and shorts? Do you think this gear would help me go outside and shovel the sidewalks and the driveway? What about this? Snow pants, a winter coat, gloves, maybe even my hood, right? Do you think this would be good gear to go out and shovel the snow and the driveway? What about shoes? Do you think these sandals would be a good idea to put on to do this task? Or do you think these boots would be better to put on to do the task? What tool should I use? This spatula? Or should I use this snow shovel? Well, what did you think? What kind of gear should I put on to accomplish the task of shoveling the snow? Did you think I should put on the t-shirt and shorts? I bet you didn't. I should put those things away. I should instead put on the winter coat, the snow pants, and the gloves. And what about the shoes? Did you think I should put on the sandals to shovel snow? <laughs> no, I'm sure you didn't. I should put the sandals away. Instead, I should put on the snow boots, right? And what about the tool that I should use to accomplish the task? Did you think I should use the snow shovel or the spatula? Well, obviously, I should put the spatula away and use the snow shovel. You see, a, a, a task requires important gear, specific gear, just like a snow shovel, snow suit, coat, gloves, snow boots, etc. And we are going to learn today in our Bible story some important things we can put on to accomplish the task that Jesus wants to, us to accomplish. And we'll learn some things that we ought to put away so that we can be more effective. Stay tuned. As we've been learning about the early church, it has been important to discuss a special big picture question and answer. Why does the church exist? The church exists to glorify God by worshiping Him, showing His love, and telling others about Jesus. Jesus saves us, but not so we can sit around and be happy we are saved. Yes, we should feel extreme joy because of salvation, but that joy will naturally push us to glorify God by serving Him and spreading the message of the gospel. As the church grows, more people glorify God, and that's what we were created to do all along. Two weeks ago, we learned that the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus. Last week, we heard the amazing story of Paul's conversion. Jesus saved Paul and chose him to spread the gospel. God used Paul to start many churches and to instruct churches in how to fulfill their purpose, to worship God, show his love, and tell others about him. This week, we're going to learn a bit about one of the churches Paul planted, as well as the letter he wrote to help them love and obey God more fully. Our story today is called New Life in Jesus. Paul became a Christian a few years after Jesus died and rose again. He joined the early church and traveled around sharing the gospel with others. Paul often wrote letters to churches when he was away from them. In his letter to the church at Colossa, 
Paul explained how people should live as followers of Jesus. As you receive Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live in Him, Paul wrote. Build your life on Him. Be strong in your faith and always be thankful. Paul told the believers to be careful about who they listen to. Sometimes the words of the world sound good and right, but they are not based on God's truth. Jesus died to set us free from the ways of the world. Paul wrote, Think about godly things, not earthly things. When you trusted in Jesus, you died with Him. Now you live in Him, so turn away from the ways of the world. Put away anger, wrath, hatred, lies, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. You used to live this way, but Jesus has given you a new life. Paul said that God is making us more like Jesus. In this new life, no one is more important than anyone else. We all belong to Jesus. Paul wrote, You are God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved. Put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another because the Lord has forgiven you. Above all, put on love. Let the peace of Jesus rule your hearts and be thankful. Paul encouraged believers to remember Jesus' teachings and obey them, teaching and encouraging one another. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts, Paul wrote. Children, obey your parents because this pleases God. And whatever you do, do everything in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. God changes us when we trust in Jesus. He adopts us into His family and makes us new. Jesus calls us to turn away from our sinful ways and live in a way that honors Him. How much do you remember about our story? Let's check. Question number one. What did Paul tell believers to continue to do? Do you remember? He told them to continue to walk in Christ. Question number two. What should believers think about? Do you remember? Paul said they should think about heavenly things. Question number three. What did Paul tell children to do? This is important. Do you remember? He told them to obey their parents. Question number four. How does God make us new? What do you think? Well, there is an immediate change that takes place in our standing before God. We were enemies of God, the Bible tells us. But after we become a Christian, we are no longer enemies. The Bible says we are justified, made right with God. Then there is a gradual change in our lives as the Holy Spirit makes us more and more like Jesus over time. That's how God makes us new. The Bible calls this process sanctification. It means being more and more like Jesus wants us to be. Question number five. Why does God make us new? Do you know why? Well, God wants us to show His love and mercy through us. We were created to glorify God by enjoying His goodness. Sin prevents us from doing what we were made to do, so God makes us new so that we can glorify Him as we were supposed to do all along. That is how we can experience the most joy in our life. And the last question, number six. Why is love so important for believers? What do you think? Well, there are many biblical commands about loving God and loving others. When we love others, we want what is best for them. We will want them to live with God as we do. And love for God motivates us to love others. Jesus gives new life to people who trust in Him. The life Jesus gives is the only way to experience true joy and peace. The Holy Spirit helps us to live in a way that honors God.
Paul wrote these words in his letter to the believers living in Colossa. Paul wanted them to know that Jesus is the leader and most important part of the church. We all must love and obey him as part of the church. Why does the church exist? Remember, we know it's because the church exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. Let's sing our key passage. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So that he might come to have first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. Colossians 1.18 He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So that he might come to have first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. First, first, first place in everything. Colossians 1.18 The messages of the world can often sound pretty good to us. Things like, you get what you deserve, or do what makes you happy, or you have to look out for yourself, or follow your heart. But those messages are not what Jesus wants for us. The Bible says we deserve death because of our sin. What makes us happy is very often bad for us. If we only look out for ourselves, we live selfishly. And the Bible teaches that our hearts are tricky and will lead us to chase after sin. Paul's letter to the Colossians helped them see that they needed to radically change their lives to match God's plan for them. We can't say we have faith and then go on living as if God isn't our Lord, living the way God says not to. That's not how it works. When we repent and believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit lives in us and transforms us to make us more like Christ. That means loving even our enemies, caring for the needs of others, caring for people, giving generously, and following God instead of our sinful hearts. Turning from sin isn't always easy, but it is always worth it. Every sin that seems fun or easy will end up hurting us and making our lives harder eventually. God changes us when we trust in Jesus. He adopts us into His family and makes us new. Jesus calls us to turn away from our sinful ways and live in a way that honors Him. Have you trusted Jesus for salvation? If you have, does your life show it? Have you put on godly behaviors? Have you put away ungodly ones? Let's pray together. Dear God, I thank you so much for this lesson today, a reminder for us as Christians that we need to put on godly things and put away ungodly things. Father, search our hearts, show us, help us see those things in our lives that are not pleasing to you and help us have the courage and the desire to change and be more like Jesus in this. Father, I also pray that you will forgive us for being unchristlike, for being ungodly in the ways that we act, and help us to be more like Jesus in those ways. I pray for those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that you would open their eyes and ears to understand and hear the gospel and trust you as Lord and Savior, and then they too can begin putting on godly things and putting away the old 
lifestyle. Father, I thank you for the, all the blessings you've given us. Thank you for uh, carrying us through the challenges of this past week. Help us act like Christ and love others as we deal with people in the next week to come. And I thank you and praise you for Jesus who showed us that example of what we should do and live and say and be. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.